It's crazy some of the things that you'll learn when you watch a sport closely. And now that basketball season is just about to cross over with football season, it's the perfect time to look at one of the coolest topics I've ever put a video out on. Athletes become so specific to their sport. Every part of their movement is unique. So I'll take a look at athletes from both sports and show you how insanely different they are, even though sometimes it doesn't really seem like it. So first, let's take a look at the jumping in each sport, getting off the ground vertically. First of all, in general, football players have less time to react because there are 11 players running at them at full speed in different directions. Plus, it's harder to see the entire field at once than the court. And this is tough because they have to jump at essentially any joint angle that they're at. If they're in a full out sprint and their instinct tells them to jump, there's not much time to drop on that last step and get into a lower joint angle to produce force optimally. Even off of two feet, you'll notice how much lower basketball players will get compared to football players right here. They can just jump much more comfortably with more time. One thing basketball players do have to be better at though, is jumping multi-directionally. They're not just jumping up or forward, but laterally to create contact, slightly backwards for a fadeaway. The possibilities are endless. Or the opposite, being able to jump straight out of a lateral movement, like you see B do here. It's so much more than straight up and down, straight forward and back, which makes it even more impressive how well these guys move. And plus, even though they normally have more time to jump, they have to be able to spring back up vertically with no wasted time. And to be able to compete in the paint and get that second rebound, they have to be very good at this. He'll bank and miss. Hit by Hibbert. No, no. And overall, while football is a primarily horizontally focused game with sprinting, blocking, backpedaling, etc., all based on horizontal force vectors, basketball is more evenly spread between vertical and horizontal. The next major difference is acceleration versus full speed. So football leans a little bit more towards full speed in most positions. They actually get to that top end speed, whereas basketball leans way more towards acceleration. Rarely do hoopers get to that top end speed. And once again, this changes the demands of the athlete. Football players constantly get head starts on their moves, whereas basketball players are often accelerating from a static or a still position. Two totally different things. Also, football players, offensively, rarely travel backwards. Even when they make lateral moves, almost everything is still oriented in a forward direction. And this is because if you're not moving up the field, you're literally going against the goal of the sport. But on defense though, especially DBs, their movement patterns are way more similar to hooping. They start out moving backwards, then have to break out of it. Any direction of movement is fair game. And that's why they're such good defenders in basketball most of the time. It's annoying as hell to play against a DB defending you in basketball. And that makes sense. Especially offensively, many times once football players get into their higher end speeds, they won't have much time to get lower than their sprint position as they change directions. But to cut optimally, it's natural to do this. Because it's lowering the center of gravity and making the move much more stable and making the body more compact. But it's just hard for them to do this in such a limited time. But look here how he drops his level slightly as he's reacting. And it makes that spin really crisp. This is one quality that truly puts those top athletes at the top. But even on this, he's not as low as D-Wade here, who has time to predetermine that move and knows I have to get low coming into this move. Basketball players, on the other hand, have to drop their shin angle and trunk angle. In other words, getting lower on almost all of their moves. And this requires a ton of not only strength, but mobility, especially in an internally rotated hip position, as well as a ton of different movements in the ankle joint. But when football players aren't moving at full speed and are still in that acceleration phase, they should be able to drop that center of gravity just like in basketball. Look here how his hand is literally on the ground as he decelerates and cuts. That's a basketball-like quality for sure. Football players are traveling at such high speeds when they counter that many times it's impossible to stop on a dime with one step. So you'll see them take a number of little steps many times on these moves to spread out that force among a bunch of steps. But the ones that can slightly drop their body and plant that foot into the ground, absorb the force and then reproduce it, are the ones that are just so evasive. Same thing as in basketball. 
And also, quick feet are way more important in football, which is why you see them doing footwork ladders way more often. It's a part of their training regimen to sharpen up these movement patterns. There's really no significant force production aspect here. So basketball players should generally limit ladders to warm-ups and potentially coordination. Another thing that's important in both sports is full body sequencing. So in football, this would be bringing up the energy all the way from the toes, through the trunk, into the arm for a stiff arm or a block. And then the ability to stiff arm and rotate the body in any way, and then turn that momentum back upfield is very impressive. For basketball players, maybe the most obvious example is a jumper. Force has to be transferred through triple extension of the ankle, knee, hip, up through the torso, and into the release. And also in both sports, even without contact, players put themselves into a ton of injury-prone biomechanical positions, especially because both are predicated on sprinting forward and combining it with lateral cuts. And this leaves a ton of possibility for an ACL injury, which occurs when the knee essentially internally rotates and turns inward like you see here. So both athletes have to be adept at doing these movements safely and having that strength to be able to resist these cutting forces. Finally, it's important to keep in mind that the average NBA player is 6'7", whereas the average skill position player in the NFL isn't even 6'1", and this makes what basketball players do even more impressive, considering the center of gravity is often so high, yet they're still able to drop it and make quick, crisp moves. Plus, being so tall, it scientifically should take longer for these guys to generate force. But yet, you see so many hoopers who are 6'7 plus with 7 foot wingspans, still getting off the ground insanely quickly. It almost doesn't make sense. And I'll save this for another video, but part of what makes Hooper so impressive as athletes is that almost everything has to be synced up with skill movements, like dribbling. Sprinting is rarely just sprinting in basketball. It's sprinting while maintaining a rhythm of the dribbling basketball, while surveying the court, ready to decelerate at any time to pass or shoot. The ball has to follow your body wherever you go as a ball handler. And this adds a whole new dimension as an athlete. So I'll let you make the decision. Which sport manufactures the better athletes? Or are they equally good athletes with different demands and different specific qualities? I've laid out the facts, it's up to y'all. Let me know. Stay tuned for new videos every week and also follow me on Instagram at By Any Means Basketball.